Alright guys, what is up today? As you can see here, we've got some new gauges we're going to be installing. Um, the most important thing is this is a mechanical oil pressure gauge. So we're going to have exact um, information on what our oil pressure is doing. Um, and if you've known, if you've done a little bit of research about these, you'll know a lot of people are like, oh, don't get them because they explode and they get hot oil all in your car. Well, that's why we have this. It's a copper wiring kit. And so basically this copper wire is what's going to be transporting the uh, hot oil instead of the stupid nylon tube that they give you. It's flexible and it breaks. Um, so we have this copper wiring kit and all of these came with their own fittings. You can kind of see them in there. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put these in. And we also have a voltmeter here because the gauge is actually a two in one gauge in a car. So we have to replace both of them. But that's going to be okay because this is pretty easy to install as well. So I got all of these on Amazon. I believe this one was $20, this one was $14. So they're very cheap and I'm pushing my luck with them, but we'll see what happens. Um, and then this kit was another uh, $14 or $15 as well. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get the car up on blocks because we're going to need to get underneath it in order to access the oil port. So we're going to go ahead and do that first so that we can actually let the car cool down enough in order for when we start on it, it's not going to be burning us with oil as well. All right, let's go ahead and get that up on blocks. All right, so with the car now up on blocks, um, what we're really first gonna need to do is start, start on the inside. Um, but I wanna show you right down under here, if you guys have ever worked on here before, you know that there's the oil, the oil filter right there, and just to the left of it, it's kinda hard to see right there, that tiny little nub, that's our oil pressure sender, sending unit. And so that's what we're gonna be taking out and replacing with our new stuff. But yeah, so first we're gonna go ahead what we need to do is remove this gauge cluster right here. So in order to do that, we're going to remove the uh, radio right here, and then up from underneath it, we should be able to unbolt it. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys, so as always, we actually have our uh, Haynes manual right here, and it's guiding us through this installation, so it's legit. Um, and the first thing it says to do is go ahead and remove the ashtray. As you can see, it just pulls right out, and then there are two screws, two Phillips head right to each side. And that's going to go ahead and remove this bottom trim piece right here, so that we can go ahead and get to some bolts underneath it. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Alright guys, once you get those two bottom ones removed, there's also two more up on the top. Um, I've already moved that one over there, and you can see, I'm right about to go ahead and get this one out. So we'll go ahead, undo it, set that off to the side. And now this faceplate, with a little bit of effort, comes right out. And there we go. So here's our faceplate, comes out. And there's a connector down there for the cigarette lighter. Uh, we can go ahead and undo that, and then this should come right out. Alright, so the connector for the cigarette lighter, it just unscrews, and then there's one clip right next to it for the light, and there's also one clip right behind the ashtray for a light as well. And then once that's done, this could just pop right out. If you guys can tell, I've actually shifted my shifter a little bit, um, and since we're up on blocks, I went ahead and put some wooden blocks behind it, just so that nothing would happen. Uh, that way I just had enough room to get that out of there. Um, so we're going to go actually and shift this back into park. Um, until we need to get the rest of the radio out, just in case. Alright, so now in order to get the radio out, we've got four bolts. One down there, over there, up right there, see if you can focus. There we go, one right there, and one right there. And then the radio should go ahead and come right out. So let's go ahead and remove those bolts and see what happens. Alright guys, so as you can see we've gone ahead and pulled the radio out. One little trick when you're doing this is kind of tilt it forward a little bit on the top uh, because these tabs will get stuck underneath the trim right here on the dash. So once we do that, you can either leave it in or I'm going to take it out just because it's going to make it a bunch easier. As you can see those, that white panel right there, that's our gauge cluster. We're going to be removing that. But in order to get the radio out, there's this one wiring harness right here. We're going to go ahead and undo that. And then there's also one on the side here that we might have to undo as well. So we're going to go ahead and undo, undo those and pull the radio out. Alright guys, and always remember, before you start any sort of electrical um, taking apart, we do want to remove the negative cable on our battery. So we can see that's undone there. So we can go ahead and get started now. 
Alright guys, as you can see, pulled the radio out, it's right there. There were a few more connections than I thought there were, so you can see right here is one of the antennas. Um, let's see, where is it? This is, it seems to be another antenna, I don't know why it has two. Um, uh, maybe one for the, when it's down and one for it's up, I'm not sure. Um, we got a couple connections here. Um, we got this big white one on the bottom. Um, and then we had all these on the side, and as you can see, there's all these little lights. There's three, two over there and one over here um, that were on it, and we had to undo those as well. Um, but now you can see it is out, and we have plenty of access to our module right up here. So we're going to go ahead, undo those two screws, and see what happens. Alright, and just like that, those two screws let this come out. There was a sort of foam seal around them that kind of stuck to them. You can sort of see it a little bit on them. Um, it was just around the edges, um, and that kind of stuck it a little bit, but just work it slowly and it'll eventually come out. So now all we have to do, on the back here, there's one connector, and it'll come all the way out. Alright guys, so as you can see, we have our gauge out now, and before we go ahead and move this to the side and get rid of it forever, um, there's one thing we can learn from this. So our new gauges are back illuminated. Um, so they need a power source. And so what we can do is we can actually look at this, and these have two lights on it, one for each gauge. And if we go ahead and undo it, we can see that there's two contacts. Let's see if we can focus on that real quick. All right? There we go. All right, so there's one contact here, one contact there. So this one goes to this pin, and this other one will follow it around, and we'll figure out where it goes. And those are going to be our ground and uh, power pins for both of our new lights. Um, so we'll just go ahead and line this up with what was on here. If it'll focus. Right, there we go. So we'll just line those pins up there. And then we'll be able to figure out how to cut the wires off of that so that we can go ahead and get our uh, power working as well for the back illumination. All right, so I plan to use that little plastic piece down there um, that came off of that. It didn't quite work out because it wasn't long enough. So what I went ahead and did, and I'll show you guys in just a bit here, um, I cut out a piece of plastic that's the same diameter as this hole here, and then I cut out an inner diameter hole for my gauge, and I'm going to, I've stuck some silicone tubing around the outside, and I'm basically just going to push it in. Um, I might use a little bit of super glue or something removable, like hot glue maybe, um, but that's what I'm going to use for now. Um, I'll probably change it a bit in the future. But in the meantime, while we're waiting for this to dry, because I painted them, um, I'm going to come under here and... If we're looking at this, I want to find a power cable for our new lights for nighttime. There we go. And so, when I was looking at this, um, there was a power here. Uh, let's see if we can focus real quick. Alright, so there was a power cable running to this top one right here um, with a silver diode. And there was also one running right here, this bottom corner, and it has nothing in it. So we know that this is going to be one of our power cables, and we're going to test just in case. Stick a voltmeter in here, um, ground it to one of these metal pieces back here, um, and then turn our lights on as it would be at night and see if there is 12 volts running to that. If there is, then that's going to be our cable. Um, I'm either going to cut it at the back here, or I'm going to just stick a little thing in and uh, hope that it'll stay in there. Um, I'm also going to plumb both the gauges together, So, um, and that's how it kind of was with that. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem with um, blowing any fuses or anything. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that, and we're going to, hopefully it'll work. Alright guys, well this jumble of wires is almost done. Um, we're going to go ahead and tuck some of those back. But what I've gone ahead and done is I've, sp I've spliced in here. Um, let's see if you can see. Alright, there we go. Alright, so this red wire with a green stripe on it, that is going to be the 12 volt for your backlight. Um, and then this green one, um, I don't know if it has any stripes on it or anything, but it's green. And they were both right next to each other on the harness. Um, that one is going to be your voltage, so it turns on 12 volts whenever you turn the car keys to the on position. Um, so that's how that goes. I have them both grounded right here, as you can see. I'm definitely going to try to get that wiring pushed up out of the way, but for now it's just kind of there. As you can see, these are my kind of little mount things. This one is actually a little bit bigger, I might have to trim it down. Um, but this one actually fits fairly well, and it doesn't look terrible, you know. It's good, good enough for now at least. Um, so that's how that is. I'm running out of time for today, so I'll have to wait for tomorrow. And then we'll go ahead and run the oil line. 
Alright guys, well we're back in day two, and today we're going to be running the uh, copper watt, copper tubing for our gauge, and uh, hopefully installing them and taking it for a test drive and seeing what happens. Um, so let's go under here real quick. Let's see if we can see. Alright. Now, let's see if it'll focus. It shows it a bit. Do not hurt. Well, right up in there, it's kind of hard to see. We have the starter motor right here, and then kind of right behind it, that silver, silver light right there, that is our uh, oil pressure sending unit that we're going to be taking out, and then we're going to run a wire up over there, our copper tube up over there, and then into the cabin. So let's go ahead, we're going to remove that and then put the new one in. Alright guys, so in our kit um, with the copper tubing and everything, um, it came with a couple of little brass adapters. Um, our gauges came with some as well, but I'm using the one from the copper tubing because these are um, from Bosch and I think that they're probably a little more higher quality than the $20 gauges we got. So as you can see, um, we have a couple of adapters right here and uh, this one actually didn't come with the kit, I had to buy this. Um, it was separate. And it is for, I believe it's going to fit the block, the engine block. And then these ones came with the kit, and these are standard fittings. So I'm going to go ahead and leave a caption right now in the description of what this is, this adapter. Um, as well as, uh, there's a link in the description on where to buy it on Amazon. Um, so once we get those installed, um, we can run the tubing, and then right up into the firewall, and we should be able to get that good. Alright, so I went ahead and got the uh, copper tubing through, and I also got this oil filter out, and I verified the threads on there do match our new adapter fitting, and as you can see, I've already put a bit of the white PFTE tape on here, um, just some thread sealer, and we're going to go ahead and stick this into the block now, um, we're going to put a bit more of the white thread sealer on there, and then we have these little fittings here, there you go, these little fittings, oops, yeah right there that go on our copper tubing and that's going to seal it and crush it down. Um, so let's go ahead and get that all set up. Alright guys, one thing to mention here, these are the instructions, don't mind that they're in like French or something, they're our English ones, but I wanted to show you this picture right here and this just shows how the little ferruli thing or whatever it is is supposed to go on and basically um, it looks like a little cone, let's see if we can see that right there looks like a little cone, and so the co the end of the cone, that's the longer one, is supposed to face towards the uh, adapter fitting, so it's going to go like that, if you guys can see. Um, so that's just a little note. Other than that, it should be pretty straightforward, putting um, the tape on all the threads, just to make sure it's got a good seal, and then we can go ahead and stick it in the car now. Alright guys, just wanted to do a little warning real quick. Um, I was going ahead and tightening, tightening this onto the engine block, and uh, let's see if we can focus on that. As you can see, that nut just cracked in half. It just split all the way around the end. Um, so obviously brass isn't as strong as steel, and so um, you really can't tighten it as tight as you would like a regular, um, like this oil pressure sending unit that I had before, because um, it's not going to be as strong. So I'm going to go ahead and do a bit of research and I'm going to leave a little bit of info down here in the subtitles right now um, about how how hard you should really tighten it um, because we definitely don't want to crack all of them. I've got two more because I bought the extra kit but that's still besides the point. We don't want to crack them and we want to make sure these are going to last a long time and not be under too much, tense, um, too much tension that if it were to get a bump or something it would crack. So I'm going to go ahead, do a little bit of research, and then we'll start again, uh, we'll try again, and hopefully not crack that one. Alright, so once you get the engine bay connected, you can go ahead and bring it in here to your new gauge. Um, connect it in the rear there, you can, can kind of see I've already done it. Um, as you can see down here, I've actually left a coil of tubing. Um, that's just in case it kind of pulls or rocks in the engine a little bit, or I need to move this up here as well. Um, this is kind of just a temporary thing right now at least. Um, I'm going to go back and redo it a little bit later, make it look a bit more professional. But uh, for now, all that we can do is go ahead and start it up and look for any leaks. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn it on, make sure both my new gauges work. 
um, leave it running for about maybe 10 to 15 seconds and then turn it off and then go look I'll check in the engine bay and also in here one thing to note is in the engine bay let's see if we can come over to it this piece of uh, this guard right here which is just above that that's actually our exhaust manifold um, so if you are going to be checking down here for leaks be careful not to burn yourself um, I've done that a couple times it's not fun um, so there you go guys so we're gonna go ahead and start it and hopefully this video helped and if you have any questions go ahead and leave it down below and I will try to answer them as best as I can see you guys later